So, I'm happy to be back. Even though it's not really being back for you, it is for me, because I haven't been recording in two days quite. You know, yesterday and the day before, I haven't recorded due to, you know, time reasons and what's going on. I feel like something is really slowing down my PC, which is very odd, you know, which is also slowing down the recording relatively significantly. Anyway, um... I'm happy to record something. I might be not good at talking since, you know, dieting and some shit really, really is fucking my head, uh, I have to say. But I'm, I'm going to give my best. I'm going to do my best. And we're going to see because we're going to go through another book summary by the Palmos.com site. Make your bets by William McRaven. I might have gone through this summary before, but I think that it is actually worth always or quite often, depends on the book though, but since I don't know the book anymore, I can't really decide on that level that it is good to go through something more than once, you know, and since probably as I've been going through this, this has been, you know, you know, some time passed, and I've definitely improved my skills of, you know, reading and and showing things, um, yeah, I think it makes sense to go through it. And, and discuss it, and talk about it, and what not. Make Your Bad, a summary and review in PDF. In Make Your Bad, Admiral William McRaven teaches you the mindset, beliefs, and values of the tenacious, I think, high-value man. If you want to become a tenacious, if this is even pronounced correctly, I don't know, man, read on. The bullet summary. So, well, maybe let's go through the contents. And as always, the link to this summary or to this article is going to be down in the description. So, if you want to check it out, please check it out. Disclaimer. If you don't want to go through the whole video, which is completely understandable, it's not produced, not made for everyone. Some people are going to like it. Some people are absolutely going to fucking hate it. But please check out the article. You're probably going to go through it way faster than I'm going to go through it. And... It is fucking free. I mean, you get free information, free stuff, probably a pretty good book. We're going to see. Anyway, bullet summary. Start each day with a small win. Going it alone is going it alone is weak. Find great teammates instead, including in your relationship. Yeah, don't have a fucking asshole as a partner. Anyway, there greatly and face your fears. Make your bad summary. About the author, William Harry McRaven is retired United States Navy Admiral. He started off as a SEAL and served in the Persian Gulf War. Make your bed. Make your bed is meant in part figuratively, but certainly also literally. The reason why you do your bed is to start the day with an accomplishment task or accomplished task. You start with a win and it puts in a positive mood of someone who gets things done. A side note from me here, I I kind of sometimes started to do so as well, you know, to to make my bed and to, um, you know, really tidy up my room because most often it really is chaotic and, and really not nice in here. But I gotta have to say that it is one of these areas in my life where I, well, I just don't give a shit. I really just don't. You know, I wake up, I brush my teeth, I go take a shit, and then I'm going to sit here and do something. I'm recording something, I'm designing something, I'm preparing something, I'm doing whatever. And this is just not a part of my life. It's not It's not something that I consider too important. You know, I might be wrong there. It might be just um, kind of restricting me from, well, basically developing a certain skill or developing a certain attitude that is helpful in other areas as well. This could totally be the case, you know, that it is some, well, it sounds more magical as I'm talking about it than kind of something that's whatever, at least in my case for me. But it could definitely change something. I don't know. I would have to try it out and and do something about it. But the thing is, it's just one of these areas in my life where I just don't want to put too much energy into I mean, I sometimes do and sometimes really am pissed off by the fact that um, 
that it is so, 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 so not tidied up in my room. That it is actually making me feel bad and feel like really, um, well, quite that, that, you know, there, there is some sort of pressure on me. You know, when I'm looking around and I'm only seeing dirt, I'm only seeing like unorganized shit and whatnot. And then I tidy things up and everything is fine again. You know, I'm not bad at tidying things up, but just for for the most part, don't consider it being important for me as well as a human in terms of my productivity, in terms of you know me me feeling good long term and whatnot. Because of course, if I put in a lot of of energy into tidying up, then I don't have that energy for doing something else that might be more important. Might be, but yeah, difficult topic. But anyway, it is so laggy today. Actually, very sorry for that. Can you please? Um, ah, come on. Is it this? No. Can I please? No, I can't. For whatever reason. I don't know why. No, no. There it is. You need a teammate. You need friends and teammates in life. And I particularly loved that one of William McCraven's example of teammates is actually his wife. Uh, it helped him get uh, get through a difficult time in life in which without her he would have become depressed. That's very powerful and very vulnerable of him to say and he is right. The science of attachment indeed explains that having a strong emotional support from your pa- partner or from our partner make us stronger. And I do want to, well, I, I can't switch the scene, I'm sorry. Uh, I do want to point out and do want to say that one of the things that I'm most grateful for is those people that have surrounded me in terms of my friends and those people that are at this point in time now surround me. They just shaped me. They really did from, you know, all the schoolmates that I had, all those people. It's been throughout my life, really throughout my life, I had, well, I, I, I was so fortunate with the people that I met, with the people that I hang out with, or hanged out with, whatever, hung out with, probably. Um, I was really, really lucky, really unfort- uh, really fortunate. It is such an insane thing. And, and looking back, and I've, I've just looked at this, and I've had it in my mind quite often, that it is insane how lucky I was. That is insane um, the quality of people that really surrounded me. They all are fucking amazing. They really are. It is insane. Of course, you know, um, there's going to be some tendencies. There's going to be some, um, some, 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 well, some things that I personally wouldn't do and so on and so on and so on. Of course, you know, people are people and there's always going to be differences, you know. You're not going to find somebody that is exactly like you. Well, you can. Of course, there's somebody, but, but yeah, this is, not not necessarily a, a variable for me to say, okay, you know, because you're slightly different, you're not my friend anymore. Anyway, you know what I mean. The thing is, it is insane how much of an impact this is having on me. I mean, saying like, oh, you know, you're the sum of the five people that are surrounding you and whatnot. It might sound dumb and you probably have heard it way too often at this part of time, but I think it is actually the truth. If you're surrounded by great people, you know, by people that, that do shit, that make something happen, that, uh, that are working on their goals, that are just, that are smart people, they, this is going to change you. This really is going to change you. As well as, you know, if these people are, you know, you know, trying to get other people down, trying to be really negative and whatnot and are not there for you, all of these things, of course, these things happen as well, but well, I'm I'm so lucky and fortunate in this department. It's insane. Life is unfair and get over it. Life is unfair and you should stop wasting your time and energy complaining about it. That's how it is. Do something about it instead of complaining. Yeah. Complaining is actually quite a waste of time and it really is. You know, it also takes up time. You know, it's not only a waste of time, but it also takes up time that you could be using for something else. Use your failures. McRaven's swimming team during his SEAL training was constantly arriving last. 
And so uh, that also means he'd have to, to go through an intense punishment treating called the circus. The circus was so tough that many re- members would quit instead of finishing it. But he went through it and at the final swim test his team finished first. That's a lesson on how to use your failures. And if you want a more intellectual approach, I'm a big believer of what Ray Dalio says. Pain plus reflection are your biggest growth opportunities. Yeah, I would say so as well. You know, that there's something coming up in my life that I am a bit concerned of or about, whatever. And... I do basically have the opportunity to not do this particular thing, you know. But I thought, I thought about the opportunity. I thought about, well, what if I just don't do it? But I really, in my heart, believe that that I just need to do it. You know, I, I just, even though I know that to a really high degree, quite, this is going to fuck me and this is going to make things relatively difficult for me. Also long term, people thinking shit about me whatnot, which is, you know, definitely something in general one should not be concerned about, one should not even think about, but, but yeah, I just feel like that I need to do that, because it is something hard, it is something tough, and and looking back in my life, I've, you know, I just don't like doing the easy thing, to some degree, it's been one of the most dumb decisions that I, that I made, and I also thought, well, You know, when life is easy sometimes, it's also not that of a bad thing. You know, you don't always have to be fucked. You don't always have to be just completely, (laughs) completely crushed by life. You know, it's it's, it's not necessarily cool as well. Anyway, personally, I use my failure for motivation and my failure and my darkest days are the driving force behind this website. They are greatly. There's always the possibility of failure. The more you go for bigger goals, the bigger the possibility for failure. If you want to achieve, and also the bigger the possibility of actually achieving something that is great. Even though, and this is an analogy or metaphor, whatever, that I've been using and having and and just dealing with for quite some time, really. I've been talking more about it in the beginnings of the podcast, but, you know, things change anyway. If you shoot to the moon, the chance of of hitting a star is much, 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 much higher than if you go for the star. You know what I mean? If you really have a high goal, then the chances are way higher that you're you're gonna hit something mediocre or something just, you know, slightly good, something that's that's slightly elevated, slightly above mediocre. But if you go for mediocrity, if you go for, okay, I'm just willing to have this, this thing that's, well, um, not amazing, but also not shitty, something in between, it is still good, of course, I don't want to just talk it down, but the chance of you hitting this, you know, might be 100%, but you're not going to get above, and the chances of that, that you're even going to get lower, if you kind of miscalculate things, if you kind of overdo things, if you kind of whatever, there's so many variables in life, it is insane, but if you go for really the high thing, the big goal, the biggest thing you can imagine. The chances actually there that you're going to hit something slightly beneath it. And all the chances there that you're going to hit this thing. The chances, you know, in theory, also there that you're going to exceed. And going to hit the goal that is even bigger than the moon. So to speak. Anyway. Uh, if you want to achieve anything significant in life, you must move forward towards the obstacles head first. Those who live in fear of failure and embracement what and embarrassment, I'm sorry, commit the ultimate sin, not living up to their potential. There is so much in us. It is insane. It is so cool as well. Real life applications. Stand up to bullies. I loved the analogy of the sharks and the sharks of life. That's basically the spirit of this website. Face the sharks and stand up to bullies. You do it for yourself, but also for the world. Accept life's not fair. This is another big lesson. Life is not fair. Accept it and use your energy and wits to work around, learn from it and leverage it or to contribute to making it fair without whining. Cons, never quit. 
I can imagine people who finish an exhaustive training tends to feel proud that they went through and tend to look down at those who quit. The other indeed stresses the idea of never quitting and uh, equates quitting to ringing the bell when a Navy SEAL would quit the training. I think there are many situations when quitting is the best option. Quitting your dull job, quitting before you risk severe injuries, or even quitting Navy SEAL training if that is not your thing. Of course, if you're not good at it and it is just really only a pain in the ass, it, well, you know, it is for sure going to be a pain in the ass. But if you just also see that this is not what you should be doing, of course, it is a, it's a tiny failure and you have to live with it. But in the end, if you're able to make up for this failure with something that's way better for you, for you as a career, as a hobby, as whatever, as a business, whatever it might be, then why not? Now you're going to think, well, you know, I, I might have not gone through the whole Navy SEAL training, but now I'm a billionaire. And guess what? Nobody would fucking care. Nobody would give a shit. You know, and you as well not, you know, because you have accomplished something anyways. Of course, if you quit Navy SEAL training and, and you kind of fuck up your whole life, then yeah, you, you, you have fucked things up. And you've made things better. I just... Just realize that I don't have any hair on my knees. Hmm. Interesting, right? Make your bed literally. What a waste of time for a driven man looking to maximize the use of his time. You're going to sleep in it again in the evening anyway, or if you're like me, work while you're lying on it. Well, this is quite actually what I think. Like... You know, it, it, it's just not worth the time. Also, just tidying up my room unless it is really inhibiting my productivity and my well-being. But if it is just there and if everything is fine, why the fuck should I? You know, it's, it's nonsensical. Pros. Teamwork. I love how make your bad stresses that having a strong network around you, including your romantic partner, is key in making you stronger. And it really is. Motivational in a positive way. Make your book is... <laughs> make your book, make your bad is motivational, but not in any empty way. It's motiva- motivation in a very powerful way. For example, when it says that the smaller crew always finishes first in his training. Nothing mattered, he says, but you will, but your will to succeed. Measure a person by the size of their heart, not the size of their flippers. That's a really good one. Make your bad review, which is going to be the last part of the whole summary. Make a bad is a powerful book on the power of persistence and heart, but also on the importance of building a great supporting team around you, including your relationship. I decided to give Make a Bad four stars because, after all, the messages are well known, albeit they are experienced, they experienced backed and well told. But I was on the verge of giving it five stars. But yeah, anyway, I do hope that I've been able to share some important things with you. And give you some ideas and give you some thoughts and and whatnot, something to consider, to keep in mind. And yeah, there's actually a quote that I've, or something that I've left out. There are a lot of sharks in the world. If you want to change the world, face the sharks. And with that being said, I'm going to end the episode. See you soon.